In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get clean, professional sounding audio right in DaVinci Resolve. First, using nothing but the tools that come with the free version of DaVinci. Then I'm gonna show you how to take it an extra 10, 20%, really polish it off using a few of the tools in the paid version. You guys might not realize this, viewers are gonna judge your videos, the quality, credibility, far more based upon the quality of your audio than they are off the quality of your video. It's almost unconscious, but it's true. Don't wanna waste you guys' time, so let's jump right in. Help, I'm in a bubble! All right, let's go. Right here in my timeline, I have two dialogue clips, and then I have some B-roll here, and then some music for the backing track. Both these dialogue clips are recorded right here in my studio, and this is just some music right off of Epidemic Sounds. So I'm gonna play this back in Fairlight so you guys can look at the levels over here on the right. Audio tracks one and two are gonna be the dialogue. Audio track three is gonna be the music. So let's go ahead and have a listen. So it's terrible. The music is way overpowering the dialogue. You can't even hear the dialogue. It's completely drowning in the music. So we need to do something about that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the music down a bit. I find that negative 18, negative 20 decibels is usually where I like to have my music sit. It doesn't interfere with the dialogue typically. And everything usually sits really nice. So let's have a listen back. Basically the same sensor you find in Sony, you find in this case. So the dialogue is still pretty low. If I remember right, I didn't record this dialogue at the levels that I wanted to. Usually when you're recording dialogue, you want to aim for about negative 12 to negative 6 decibels. If we go over to Fairlight and check this out, looking at audio uh, tracks 1 and 2. We're sitting at like negative 20 to negative 25, so we need to add quite a bit of gain to this. So I'm gonna select audio track one. I'm gonna do all these edits just on this first uh, dialogue clip. I'm not gonna change any on the second just yet. I want you guys to be able to listen through the first clip and then see the second clip completely unedited so you can hear what that change sounds like. So first thing I'm gonna do is increase the volume here up 15 uh, decibels, which is a huge change. You should never really need to change your dialogue that much unless you're in a really hairy situation. But here, got our, so let's have a listen. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. So that sounds pretty good to me, as far as the balance, you know, ratio between the dialogue and the music itself. If we hop back over to Fairlight, we can see the levels here on this one too. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. So we're sitting at about negative 10, which is almost right in the sweet spot where we want it to be. So, it's looking good. Next thing we want to do is EQ both our music and our dialogue. First, I'm going to hit the music. And this is a really simple, subtle change, but it makes a huge difference. I want to scoop out some frequencies that are going to clash with the dialogue itself. So I find scooping out around 2K and around 800 Hertz works really well here. And I pull out about negative 13, negative 14 decibels. This just adds room in our frequency band so that our dialogue can sit in without any frequencies piling up in that area. So that none of the music kind of masks in, especially if you use music that has any kind of vocals in it, which you usually shouldn't. This is going to scoop that out so that only your dialogue is poking through at those frequencies. So let's have a listen through. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. So it's pretty subtle, but this is going to be much more noticeable on different devices. Most people watch YouTube videos on iPhones, laptops, devices that don't have a lot of low end. So without that low end, it's much harder to kind of discern the difference between, you know, the music and dialogue when they're piling up in these areas. So this is good to do for different devices. Next. I'm going to EQ our dialogue. Now this is going to be to taste. It's going to change depending on your voice as well as, you know, how high it is in pitch, how low it is, old, young, whatever. But there are a few things that are good rule of thumb. First thing I'm going to add is a high pass. So what this means is we're scooping out low frequencies, getting rid of, you know, wall hum, AC unit, you know, just electricity in the walls, whatever. And we're going to let the high frequencies pass through or, you know, high pass. I find Cutting out everything below about 80 hertz works really good for my voice. And then the next thing I like to do is add a little bit of a boost on the low end. This can add a little bit of warmth to your voice, make it sound a little deeper. Honestly, it, it almost emulates kind of podcast qualities. So around 150 hertz, I'm going to add about four, maybe five decibels. And then I'll let you guys listen to this. 
Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets. I'm gonna change the levels on this so that they are matching levels. So you can hear the difference in just the EQ changes here now. It's how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like subtle but notable. Let's go back to our other clip. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna scoop out some of the room noise. Depending on your recording environment, there's gonna be different frequencies that are gonna pile up. I have acoustic panels in this room, but there's still different frequencies that just kinda of make your voice sound boxy, nasally, things like that. Monitor right here, wall behind it. There's reflections off the walls that cause certain frequencies to pile up and just, they don't sound good. So we're gonna do a peek and we are gonna try and find some of those while this plays back. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally, and let's play that again. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. So right there sounds pretty bad to me. About 470. Let's listen back. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively. So you can hear a pretty good difference there between our first clip and our second clip. Awesome. Last thing I'm gonna do, I wanna scoop out some of the plosives in the high end. These are gonna be the ch, p, k, where you're spitting a lot of air into a microphone. On higher, you know, on different devices that are more towards a higher frequency output, these are gonna become much more harsh. They're gonna pile up. They just don't sound good. We want them still to be present, but just reduced in volume. They're around 6,000 to 7,000 hertz. And we're gonna do a notch just like we did. So we can find those. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this. Sounds pretty good, seven. I mean, it sounds terrible, but the area sounds close. So 7,400, listen back. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life and it's almost entirely changed. Awesome, so I think that sounds great. Some people might prefer just the raw output here. And I mean, this Sennheiser, it has pretty good audio to begin with. I just like rounding out a little bit, adding a little bit of warmth. I mean, you could just process this to take it even further, but that's sitting pretty good. So I'm gonna copy this and option V and then paste the audio attributes there. And then our EQ curve is pasted right in. And now if you play it through, Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life and it's almost entirely changed the way that I color grade footage. Awesome, I think that sounds pretty good to me. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn off the EQ here. And I'm gonna show you how we can take this to the next level in fair light a little bit. We're gonna turn the EQ off here as well. Quick pause from the video, guys, check this out. If you guys care about your gear as much as I do, and you put your camera gear through just as terrible situations that I find myself in. Oh my God! You need to protect your glass. Dust, fingerprints, scratches, you name it. That's why I designed and printed these ND filter covers. They're incredibly durable, they're soft to the touch, they pop on with ease, allows you to easily take your ND caps off while keeping them protected, and then you can screw them right back on just as easily, as well as my rear lens caps. They're awesome, they pop off, you can get them on and off one-handed, no twisting, bam, boom, done. If you guys care about your camera gear just as much as I do, go to projectnarwhal.com, get yours today. Back to the video. Now we hop over to Fairlight, we listen back. We still have the levels set how they were, which is totally okay. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life. So the bounce is still pretty good there. Now these plugins are awesome. They're only available in the paid version. Honestly, these alone could make the entire cost of uh, Resolve totally worth it, in my opinion. First thing, if you guys have a lot of background noise, you're in a loud environment, you're recording with air conditioning on, like I actually am right now, out here in Arizona, it's so hot. It's like 110 outside right now. If I turn the air conditioning off for more than 30 minutes, the studio gets up to like 90 degrees, so can't do it. Heavily relying on the voice isolation here in DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and enable that on the first clip here. We're gonna leave the second audio track here, or the second dialogue clip, unedited, just like we did the first time, just so you guys can hear the differences there. I'm also gonna mute the music here so you guys can hear what this sounds like. 
This was recorded, this original audio recording was actually recorded with the air conditioning off, so it should be pretty clean, but there will be a noise floor you'll hear. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life, and it's should be able to hear a subtle hiss there on that second clip. It works so good. A lot of times, if it's just a little bit of a hiss like that, I'll actually turn this down to only about 35. You only really need the max if you're like really trying to kill, you know, outside noise. But I find 35 is good. It just doesn't get rid of too much that you don't want there. A lot of times if you turn it up to 100, it can start kind of trimming off the top and it makes your vocals kind of sound less crispy. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix camera. Yeah, and that hiss is completely gone still. So next thing I'm gonna do, we do have the levels pretty much set, but we can create less range in our dialogue. Basically, this is what a compressor is for. You have a compressor set so that it's gonna reduce the loudest parts of your voice, and then it's also going to bring up the uh, quietest parts of your voice. So kind of make everything a little bit more balanced. There is a compressor that's built in down in Dynamics, but this Dialogue Leveler has one built in, and it kind of makes everything a one-stop shop super simple. And we may wanna tune this specific towards, you know, balancing with the audio. In this case here, let's, Let's keep it at two. Keep it at two. I'm gonna play this through so you guys can hear what that's done. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life. And it so it almost sounds like the second clip is a little bit louder and that's probably just because the dynamics or the peak volume on that second clip are much higher. Whereas that first clip, they've kind of been brought down and everything is pretty close to one another. But in the end, I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna bring everything up so that it actually hits the most optimal volume output for YouTube. But first, we're gonna add an EQ curve just like we did in the first part. I'm gonna bring that up to about 85. We're gonna bring, we're gonna bring our second point up to about 140, uh, about five decibels. We're gonna get rid of that room noise again. Gonna drop the peak. Let's find it. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how pain. Yeah, it's about there. I think it was about 470 the last one, but this is good. Let's notch that up. Bring that down. Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life. And it I'm gonna do one more here actually too. I hear a bit of nasalness. I wanna get rid of that. It's almost entirely changed the Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Right about there. Don't want to take out too much, so I'm going to make that much sharper. I'm going to pull that down. Personally and subjectively, I Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, Nice, just sounds a lot softer there. So I'm not going to remove the plosives here. I'm going to show you guys an actual you know, an audio engineer way of doing this. We're gonna add a plugin, right? An effects plugin under restoration, fair light effects, and then de-esser. Here's is basically gonna work as a compressor that turns down the volume on just those high pitch plosives that we want. We're gonna dial it in down to 7K, where we found we've had those, you know, S's and sh's and everything else. I'm gonna start at zero, I'm gonna play this and then show you guys what it sounds like when I turn it up to 100. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Play it back so you guys can hear that. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is... So they're kind of almost non-existent there. We do want to have some of those left, so I'm not going to turn it up 200. I'm going to have it... Let's put it on 50. How Pan... Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference... And we can change how wide that is if you want. I'm going to keep it narrow where it is. I like it. That's good. So over here, we can change the order of the signal chain of all of these different effects. And in this case, I'm gonna have it go EQ, and then our effects, and then basically anything else after. So that way it's scooping out the low end, it's adding these to this processing. Vocal isolation is gonna be you know, implemented. And then the dialogue leveler, so it's gonna bring the levels up, kind of make everything nice and form fitting. So now if we listen back between the two clips. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to- So there's a drastic difference there if you guys noticed. Now, all we gotta do is copy 
this track from track one to track two. Done. Last thing I'm going to do is add a limiter here on our overall. And I'm going to look over here at the top right. Now, what I want to aim for for YouTube is about negative 14 LUFs. This is the export volume that you want for YouTube. If it's over this, YouTube's going to turn it down. If it's under this, YouTube is going to try and turn it up. I wouldn't rely on YouTube. Get it all done right here in your workstation. So let's play through. We're going to look down here at the integrated. This is going to show us what our target is for the overall track. It's going to be the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life, and it's almost entirely changed the way that I color grade footage. All right, so it's about negative four, but we want to add in our audio so we can see what everything together sounds like. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is. So we're sitting at about negative 22. We want to get this to negative 14, if you guys remember. But if you look at the control room, we want this to be no higher than negative 1.5. So I'm going to turn the ceiling down to 1.5. And then I'm going to push this up to, let's start at 5.5 and see where that gets us. Turn soft on. Let's listen back. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life, and it's almost entirely changed the way that I color grade footage. We can take it a little bit more. We're at negative 16.5. It's not too far off, but let's go to negative, let's go to 6.5 here, and let's listen back. Basically the same sensors you find in Sony, you find in Lumix cameras. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most... A little bit further, let's go to seven. Let's go to seven, four. That'll work. Last thing we're gonna do is scoop out those frequencies at about 2K. And 1K. And if we listen back, and I'm gonna listen through, and I'm going to look up here at the integrated part just to see what our luffs are if we're close to that negative 14. The only difference is how Panasonic interprets this footage. Personally and subjectively, I feel like it is the most true to real life, and it's almost entirely changed the way that I color grade footage. So we're sitting pretty. It's exactly what we're looking for for YouTube. Got a little bit of vocal isolation, the dialogue leveler, which is going to add some compression and kind of balance out our audio. The loudest parts are going to be turned down, the quietest parts are going to be turned up. We have a de -esser so that our ch all the consonants that are like that, all the plosives are going to be turned down ever so slightly and not be so harsh. We have our EQ in here, boosting the lows to add that richness, scooping out some of the room noise, a little bit of that nasalness, nasal, nasaliness in there. Then we have a limiter on the end, just bringing everything up to that negative 14 luffs that we want to have for YouTube so that our audio is up to par, sounds good, nice and clean. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys like this video and want to see more like it, please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.